Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video, we will be going over the 8.2 Unholy Death Knight. Now, this video will be essentially an update and an addition to the previous guide, only with relevant things that changed in patch 8.2. If you're curious about how to play the class at a basic level, make sure to check out my previous guide that has a lot of in-depth information uh, as far as rotation goes and as far as traits and interactions like that. But if you're just interested in the 8.2 update, then this is the video for you. So first of all, let's cover the essences. Um, this video will be mostly focused on raiding, um, because that is really where I have my experience. And in Mythic Plus, things are subject to change from dungeon to dungeon, uh, based on the affixes, based on the weeks, things like that. So for raid, single target, you will want to use Condensed Life Force, major because it lines up with our three minute cooldown or minute and a half cooldown so we can use it every other time it's up lucid dream or ancient flame minor so the damage difference between the two is very minor with lucid dreams your rotation will be a little smoother but if you have super high haste you might find yourself actually over capping on runes a little bit so in that case you want to take ancient flame if you're a little bit on the lower end of haste um, and definitely have higher crit, then you can go ahead and take Lucid Dreams. And then once your neck level is upgraded high enough, you will just take both of those in the minor slot. Now, for Cleave on bosses such as Zakul, you can go ahead and change out Condensed Life Force for the Focused Azerite Beam, and it's the Mythic Plus Essence, because this does a ton of damage whenever you have a lot of targets up. And then for the minor, Again, you can run Lucid Dream, just like you do on single target. Or for on Zakul specifically, you can also run Purification Protocol rank 3. And then once you have a high enough number of targets, even if they're not aberrations, you can still run Purification Protocol. So then as far as using the different essences, they are fairly easy to use. Condensed Life Force, you essentially want to use it on pull after you pop your Outbreak and your Dark Transformation. And then you just sync it with your third set of cooldowns because DK cooldowns are a minute and a half. This is three minutes. So you can see the pattern every other time you can press it with everything together. And that is also where you want to use your second potion. Now, the second one that you can also use on single target until you get condensed life force rank three would be blood of the enemy. And this is also a trait that will come up in mythic plus quite a lot. So Blood of the Enemy on a single target, you essentially just press it, the global cooldown before Apocalypse with every single set of cooldowns. On AoE and in Mythic Plus, you essentially want to pop uh, your Unholy Frenzy, go in, Apocalypse, uh, drop your DND, sorry, drop your DND, then Blood of the Enemy, then Apocalypse. You already want to have your DND down on the ground whenever you bl use Blood of the Enemy because the increased crit damage bonus is only for a very short period of time. Essence of Focusing Iris, fairly easy to use. You essentially just want to time it and use it whenever you can hit multiple targets. On pure single target, it's still kind of decent, but it really shines whenever you can cleave multiple targets with it. And just make sure you don't use it within Unholy Frenzy, because that will uh, prevent you from applying those Festering Wounds to the target. All right, and that's pretty much essences out of the way. So let's look at itemization, starting off with Azerite. Festermite and Magus of the Dead are pretty much the only two traits you want on all your, all your pieces. Triple Festermite, triple Magus. And then in the tier three, you'll want overwhelming power if you can. Now, some of the raid pieces do have undulating tides on them. And... The sims for undulating tides are really, really good because it assumes that you never drop below the health th threshold, so you will always be proccing the damage. If that was true, this trait would be actually insane. So this is one of those traits that on farm or on easier bosses where you basically always proc the damage will be really, really strong. However, it also does have that defensive value. So if you're doing a harder mythic boss, for example, where you just take kind of bursty damage from time to time, uh, it does give you that shield, so it's a little bit of extra safety. But SDKs, our health pool is typically high enough, and we have enough defensive cooldowns to not really need that extra shield like mages do, for example. 
So moving on to trinkets, there's quite a few that are good for an holy DK. I'm going to go over the most overpowered ones at the at the time of this video. So for a passive trinket, basically you want the dribbling ink pod from Orgazoa. This is great on fights where you can stack it up quite high before it actually pops, and also for fights that have an important execute phase, uh, which a lot of the later fights in Mythic do have. And also you can use damage modifiers to sync up with the pop of this trinket. If you have crit modifiers, for example, or you have your target taking extra damage, um, anything like that will affect the damage pop of this trinket that happens at about 29%. So for example, if you have your rock boy going, um, while this trinket pops, it will do 5% more damage. If you use blood of the enemy as this trinket pops, it will end any crits, it will do increased crit damage. So there are quite a few combinations with this and timings that if it works out great, you can do a ton of damage with this trinket. Uh, second best trinket, or the best on-use trinket in my opinion, would be Ashvane's Razor Coral, and obviously that drops from Ashvane. Now this trinket is a little bit difficult to figure out how to use, and I'm not exactly sure if people have done so yet, so I haven't gotten this trinket, and I'm just relying on logs, and what other people kind of told me to um, tell you guys how to use this trinket. Basically, you will want to sync it up with your Condensed Life Force or your Rock Boy. Um, and whenever you use that, you also pop this Trinket because you get all that crit from it. And then between Rock Boys, you will just be stacking it up to get more crit. If you're not using Condensed Life Force, then you just use this Trinket every other Unholy Frenzy because that will give you kind of a fair amount of stacks uh, in between. The next trinket here is the pocket size computation device with the cyclotronic blast red card. So that's from Mechagon Revered, and you probably know it as the Zap trinket. Um, and a lot of people are using this. So if this is your only on use trinket, then you will want to use it uh, basically on a pull after you depleted at least three runes, so you're not over capping runes. So before your unholy frenzy. Um, also note that this trinket loses a lot of value on AoE because the damage benefit is purely single target. If you run a double on use trinket, then you use your first on use with your unholy frenzy, and then after unholy frenzy is over and the shared trinket cooldown is up, that's when you can use your cyclotronic blast. But this trinket is quite strong on single target and also for fights where the target might take increased damage like Zakul, for example, since he does take extra damage whenever he steps in those puddles and they explode, you can line up your trinket with that explosion and the damage ramp and it will just do a ton of damage. The last kind of notable trinket from the raid would be Ashara's Font of Power. And as Unholy, it's a lot more annoying to use as a, than as a Frost DK because it's a 2 minute cooldown. We don't have anything that's a 2 minute cooldown. So you kind of have to delay this trinket and use it um, on pull. So before pull, you actually start channeling it at 6 seconds. And this allows you to actually army at 2 seconds. Um, and then you go into your cooldowns. And then whenever it's up, you just sync it to your next set of cooldowns after that. So you won't have it for the second uh, Unholy Frenzy, but you will have it for the third. Um, as far as specialty items and benthic items go, there's quite a few this patch. So most of our items that are best in slot actually do not come from the raid. And best in slot might be a little bit misleading, uh, but if you roll the correct pieces with sockets, uh, most of these will be best in slot. So first of all, for benthic items, the Waveblade Farseer's Arm Guards, uh, those are the bracers that deal frost damage. For benthic items, you will only want to up upgrade them if they have a socket. If they don't have a socket, they lose uh, quite a bit of value. Then for boots, they would be the Akana's Reef Strider boots. They increase your crit damage slightly. Um, and for gloves, you have Poen's Deep Sea Handguards. Uh, they just send out droplets that deal frost damage or heal your allies. 
Now for the belt, I actually prefer using the belt from Ashara, Eternity's Keeper's Great Belt. And this just procs some damage and it gains value if more people in your raid use it. However, for fights like Orgazoa and Zakul, uh, you can use uh, Sanji's or Sanji or Scale Guard Great Belt. And that's the one that increases damage done to Aberrations. For weapon, you can use Getiku's Cut of Death from King's Rest. And this weapon is worth about 10 eye levels on single target. So if you have a 440, just regular weapon with regular stats on it, versus a 430 Getiku's, you would run the 430 Getiku on single target. So then the last one is rings, and these are from Mechagon. If you have the logic loop of division or logic loop of recursion, so that's the one where you stand behind the target or the one where you have to cast three abilities, plus the overclocking bit band, so that's the haste over mastery ring, that procs haste whenever the first uh, condition is met. This ring combo is best in slot under certain circumstances. If you have a 445 socketed ring with correct stats, and then a 430 socketed one with correct stats, the Mechagon combo will most likely not be best in slot. However, if you roll a socket on either of the Mechagon rings or on both of them, then they will be best in slot in basically all situations. So as you can see, basically half of our gear is actually more than half. It's about two thirds of our gear is either Azrite items or items that are not from the raid. So there's quite a few things that you can do to increase your DPS outside of Mythic Raiding. So for the last portion here, uh, just a brief mention to stats. It, they slightly changed from the previous tier where we preferred haste. Now we actually prefer crit over haste, over mastery, over versatility. There's a few reasons behind this that I'm not really going to go into. Just know that by now you essentially want to socket and enchant crit, then uh, haste, then mastery, then versatility. You will never go for mastery and versatility. Those are just kind of stats that they happen to be on your item because it has either crit or haste as the other stat. Um, for consumables, potions, you for raiding, you will use Unbridled Fury. So that's the potion that deals fire damage. In basically all situations, you will pop it on pull. And then the second potion you will pop with your second rock boy. Um, for Mythic Plus and AoE pulls, in power proximity is a little bit better. But in raiding, you typically always want that boss damage, even if there are adds nearby. So you just use Unbridled Fury on basically everything. And then for food, you either go for crit food or haste food, depending on how your secondary stat distribution is. If you have a super high amount of crit and not enough haste, then you go haste food. If it's the other way around, obviously go crit food. Um, so we no longer use feasts or the main stat foods. Um, I think that covers basically everything for the 8.2 updates and changes. If you have any questions, please let me know. And also, I know that I only covered things that are best in slot. There's a lot of other things as, as far as essences go and trinkets that are kind of in between. So if you want more inform information about that, just make sure to join my Discord, where I typically will keep you updated with whatever is relevant. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and sub to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.